Hi, Macy. Welcome back. Am I right in saying that this is the first fight on a brand new contract? It is. How was the negotiations and did you feel valued when they came to the table and with the money you're getting now? Uh, yeah, I'm very happy with it. Um, I got to talk with Hunter and Mick and we sat down and talked and, and it was very good and I'm, I'm extremely happy with uh, where we are. And um, to be honest, like all I wanted to do was resign. You know, I think it was kind of like a, a little bump that we had like overlooked it because I, I took a fight like really fast um, before even renegotiating it. You know, I went from fighting Montana to fighting Jessica in like, I think it was like seven weeks. So there was really no time for negotiation and it just happened to land on my last fight. But I mean, at the end of the day, all I wanted to do was resign and come back. Yeah. Do you see yourself as like a UFC lifer? Like you don't anticipate yourself ever going elsewhere. You want to be here for the rest of your career? I mean, this is the biggest organization in the world. So, yeah. <laughs> What do we make of Andrea Lee and her skills, and where do you match up with her? Um, I think it's a great matchup. You know, it's a great matchup for me, and I'm, I'm very excited to go out and showcase, and I think that this is a fight where I, I go out and I finish. Um, I've come off of three decision wins in my last three fights, and, and I'm like, it's about time I get a finish. So that's, that's what I think about this fight. When you say you're looking for the finish, obviously you always are, right? But is that something in your head you're like, I'm going to change my training to try and find it, or I just see this opponent as someone that I can get out of there? I think a little bit of both. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, that's what I love to do is finish people. Uh, but for me, you know, I mean, the training is just we're going to train to be the best in the world. And, you know, we're not just training for this fight. We're training for um, the champion of the division. We're training for the best girls in the division. And, and I'm not saying that she's not. She's a great girl in this division. Um, but for me, it's like I want to be the best me possible. So um, I'm always training to finish and also evolve my own game. You mentioned the champion of the division. Bit of a shake-up up there. What did you make of Alexa yeah, Marseille? Yeah, for sure. Um, I honestly, I felt like, you know, Alexa, that was not like a shock to me. You know, she's a, a phenomenal fighter. Um, and I feel like Valentina started to get exposed a little bit when she fought Santos. Um, and, I mean, everybody is beatable. So... Uh, it was really cool to see, you know, a whole new champion in the division. I think it gives it, you know, a lot more excitement in the division. Um, but it also is, you know, Valentina was a, such a dominant champion. So uh, obviously I'm, I'm sure we're expecting a rematch at some point between them. And then, you know, at some point I want my shot back against Alexa because I want to win that back. Whether she's the champ or not, I want that fight back. Yeah. Any part of you a little bit jealous you weren't the one to dethrone Valentina? No, I think that no matter where it is, like, I think all of us are going after the same goal. You know, we all want to be the best in the world. So someone else gets their time to shine, that's their time to shine. You know, it's not my time to shine yet. So I am never going to be jealous or, or mad that someone else got to dethrone the champ, you know, because there's always going to be, you know, another cycle, another champ to dethrone. So um, I am honestly happy for Alexa, and I think that that's it's a very great thing, you know, and, and uh, she's earned it. She's, she's worked really hard, and she's earned it. Um, you mentioned, you know, you talk about the title fight. Um, do you expect an immediate rematch? Do you feel like Shevchenko deserves one? Uh, you know, that's not really up to me. Um, I think that every champion, when they lose their belt, I think that that's the first thing they want, is they want to be able to try and get their belt back. Um, I know that if I was in Valentina's position, I think that's what I would want too, you know, so I think it makes sense. Um, that's, that's what would make sense. Yeah. If the UFC does go that route, do you feel like Shevchenko will recover her belt or will we still be champion with uh, Alexa Grasso? Uh, that's a hard one because, I mean, you know, Valentina, that Valentina is good. She's really, really good. Um, but, it, it, you know, she got caught. Uh, I think she's um, has, has some holes, and, and Alexa was able to expose those. So if Alexa knows that those holes are there, then she's going to be able to expose them again. Yeah. Who would you rather fight for the belt? Gross or Shevchenko? Honestly, it, it doesn't matter to me. I do want that fight back with Alexa, but I, like I said, it was whether she's the champ or not. Um, so, I mean, if she has the belt and that's when it comes time, then I want her. And if Valentina's back to being the champ, then I want her, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I still have my journey to the top and Right now, I think I'm currently number 13, you know? So I, I have to work my way up again. Yeah, and, and it's interesting. You say you want that f fight back regardless of, of the belt. Why is that? 
Uh, because I came off of a, a year layoff in ACL surgery, um, and I, I lost the first round, but I won the third round. You know, I feel like if that was a five-round fight, I would have won that fight. Um, and I think there's a lot of people that could agree, but at the same time, I lost that fight, so obviously I want that back. Yeah. And um, if you win on Saturday night, it'll put you at 4-0 oh, um, in this current streak. You mentioned you're number 13, but 4-0 oh is, is pretty, it's a pretty good position to be in the division. So how far are you, how far do you think you are from, from a title? And uh, more or less, uh, what would you gauge uh, your position in, in the division? I think the rankings are all politics. Um, so for me, you know, being 13, I'm like, that's fine. You know, if, if I'm number 13, it doesn't matter to me. I'm getting paid and I have a great contract. So... I'm happy with working my way back up, but at the same time, you know, I think it's also about um, the noise you make in the division and how you push yourself and how you how you project yourself as a fighter that that is really going to push you. Um, and also the performances, you know, um, not to bring her up, but if you take a look at Erin Blanchfield, you know, she fought one one fight and now she's right up there, you know. So good job on her, but like. That's what I mean. Like one fight can put you so far forward. Um, so it's it's just really a matter of you know the right fights and, and the next fight you know after this finish. Yeah, and um, your only two defeats were you know against Roxanne Marafiri where you suffered that knee injury, and then you mentioned how uh, you feel like the the layoff and coming off that big knee injury affected you in, in the fight against Grasso. Um, was that the biggest thing for, for those two defeats? You think, uh, not, not to make excuses, but do you feel like the injury was sort of the biggest factor in those? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I do. Um, the, one, the one with Alexa Grasso, I'm not going to take anything away from her. Like I said, she is, she's a great fighter. Um, that was not a fight that I was ready for at the time. Uh, I took it because I'm not going to turn down a fight, you know, but at the same time, the fight with Roxanne, I mean, I tore my, I tore my ACL and, like, the first round of the fight, and I went all three rounds, but, like, I still lost. You know, it was really hard. I fought off one leg. Um, so that one, I, I never really was, like, super bitter about that one, you know? Um, and then the fight with Alex, I think that's the one where I felt like I was, like, dang, like, I lost. You know, like, that was a feeling of that. Um, but I was proud of the fact that I won that third round, and that is what made me want it back. And I'm assuming you, you re-signed for what, four, contra uh, four fights? Uh, I actually have a six-fight deal. Six fight. Yeah. Okay. Um, if, if we look at sort of contracts as chapters in, in someone's career, uh, what are you looking out? What are, what are you looking forward to getting out of this chapter, this uh, six-fight deal? What are you trying to achieve within those six fights? Chasing that belt, you know? I mean, that's, that's the end goal. Um, and just setting myself up with a strong career. I mean, I'm 24, and this is, I think, my ninth fight in the UFC. I mean, that's pretty incredible to me. Um, so just keeping that story going, you know, I've, I've really tried to build my name and build my story, and I think that that's, you know, what this contract is going to really help me progress towards, and, and I'm, you know, just really thankful and grateful to be here, and, and I'm excited. Thank you. Hi, Macy. Uh, is this your first time fighting in Texas, and uh, what's the vibe like fighting in San Antonio of all places? It's not. I actually fought in Dallas and Houston. I think I fought twice in one of them and, and once in the other. Um, and this is my first time in San Antonio so far. I haven't gotten to look around a lot because it's been a little bit rainy and stuff. But, um, you know, for me, it, it feels kind of quiet and slow. And, and I like that, you know, because it really gives us time to just focus on what we're here to do. Um, but I do know that the Texas crowd is, is incredible, and, and I'm so excited um, to be able to go out and, and perform in front of them. This is my first fight in, like, a different state other than Vegas since 2019, so I'm very excited. Is it kind of weird to fight, you know, like, you know, there's no casinos over here. It's not Vegas, but, you know, is it kind of weird to not be fighting in Vegas this time around? No, you know, I really loved it, you know, before before COVID when we got to go and travel and see the different places, you know, obviously, like, I don't know how I feel about traveling, like, across country and weight cutting, but I definitely love going to, I've been to Boston, I've been to Nashville, and this is Texas, you know, like, I love traveling to see and to see the crowd and to see the fans, because, like, every time we go to Vegas, we go back to the same, it feel what feels like the same fan base, you know, the same crowd, you know, you're always going to get a lot of people that return there. And just to feel the different energy and the different vibe of, of the, the fans, is it's so much fun. 
Um, and it's something that I feed off of. And how do you, how do you envision getting your hand raised on Saturday? I'm going to dominate everywhere and shine. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Macy, back here. Um, quick question, like, what is it like for somebody when they come back after a serious knee injury like you had? Because we saw Casey O'Neill make her comeback fight after, I think it was nine months. She had just had surgery on her knee. And, I mean, she didn't look like the Casey O'Neill in the previous fights. So is, is it, like, mentally draining? Are you nervous when you get back there, when you come off of a knee surgery like that? Yeah, I mean, for me, like, and, and obviously I can't speak for every athlete because everybody's different, but um, I think the thing that I struggle with the most is, like, it's such a traumatic injury, and then you have, your, like, your knee hacked to pieces, and, like, when they fix you up, that you're just, like, you, it's hard to trust that it's, it's good, you know? Like, even when the doctors are like, you're good, you're good, it still feels like, even to this day, my knee's still, like, clicks and pops and and I still have like spots where it's numb so it's one of those things where like you have to really learn to trust in the medical field and the people that are in place to to tell you hey you're good to go um and that's something that like for me I didn't do all the way up until like even when I was in the cage I'm like oh man is it gonna buckle is it gonna this you know and and also um I don't know how she tore her knee but for me like I tore my knee in the fight so there was also that like that a little piece of, like, I don't, it's, I wouldn't call it PTSD, because, like, that, I feel like that's, like, other people have that way worse, um, but, like, a trigger almost, you know, where I'm just scared to have that happen again, where you're, you're kind of thinking about, oh, this is when it happened, um, and feeling that same feeling again is, is awful, so, um, for me, that was something I also worked with a mental coach on, um, but it, it's difficult to come back, and anyone who does it, like, if they get back in the cage, like it, full support to them. You know, it's it's incredible. And then what's uh, what's the relationship like with Corey McKenna? Because I see you guys always kind of <laughs> joking around on Instagram and like, how, how does she help you when it comes to like fighting and you know coming into fight week and stuff? Corey and McKenna and I have become best friends, like truly best friends. Um, we actually live together now. She moved in um, to the house that I have, or that a house that I'm living in. Um, yeah, I mean, we, uh, she's gonna, she hates me now, but I actually gave her a concussion in this camp, <laughs> like, two weeks ago, <laughs> um, but I told her, just so that, I told her that I would say this, I'm gonna buy her roller skates after this fight, with the bonus that I get. Uh, why roller skates? Uh, because she wanted roller skates, because I gave her a concussion, <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what we're doing. We have a great friendship. She's an awesome training partner, an awesome person. Um, and not just her, but all the girls at Team Alpha Male. I feel like females in general, like, you have to find a, a good group to train with because there's a little bit of, like, female fighters are way different than male fighters. And I've been told that by all the male fighters. You know, they're like, you guys are dirty. And it's, it's true, but, like, at the end of the day, like, it's so cool to see other women just grinding towards their goals. And Corey's one of them, Marissa's is one of them, Jesse's one of them. Um, there's, there's so many girls at that gym and Jan, same thing. Like it's, it's a lot of fun to train with girls that work hard and, um, are just chasing their goals and dreams.